It's November and that means the rut is starting to heat up. It's probably off another week or two uh, for peak rut here in Missouri, but things are definitely starting to get interesting. So I hope you've got some vacation to burn because you definitely need to be hunting over the next two, three weeks. During this exciting time of the hunting season, everybody's dreaming of having a big buck walking into their setup, especially if they can rattle and grunt, get that buck's attention, and that buck just hauls ass over to them. And if you watch enough hunting TV shows, Calling during the rut seems so simple. They just hit that grunt tube a few times, give a couple of rattles, and that target buck just comes running in from hundreds of yards away, goes perfectly broadside, just begging to be shot. But we all know that in the real world, it doesn't always work that way. Actually, a lot of times it doesn't work that way at all. Either your grunts and your rattles have no effect, seems like nothing responds to them whatsoever, or you give a deer, a, a buck you see in the distance, you give him a couple grunts hoping to get his attention. He'll want to come in and check out whatever buck made that grunt. Instead, it scares him off. Maybe he runs away or just seems indifferent to it altogether. Now, grunting and rattling during the rut can be a very effective strategy if you do it correctly and under the right circumstances. You just have to pay attention to some very subtle signs. So in this video, we're gonna go over three deer calling tips for you to use during the rut. So maybe you can get that buck's attention, get him to change his course, get a little closer to you, or maybe even call in a buck that was not gonna come into your area already. But before we go over these rut calling tips, do me a favor, and if this is your first time on my channel, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you click that bell icon so you can be notified every time I upload a video. And the first tip to calling during the rut, it is definitely okay to not use any calls at all. I know it's kind of dumb to have a don't call tip in a video about calling tips during the rut, but it does need to be said. Just because you see it on TV or you see it in YouTube videos, that doesn't mean that you can use it or that you even should use it. This is especially true if you hunt in high pressure areas where it seems like everybody's got four or five different calls that they blow on every five minutes just praying something responds to them. Every time you use a call, you run the risk of scaring off deer and getting busted. Any buck with half a brain is going to try to circle downwind of where that sound came from, and that's if you sound convincing. And if you're not convincing, you probably never even know that they were there. They'll just quietly turn around and go the other direction. Sometimes the best calling strategy during the rut is to just keep that call in your pocket, sit in a travel corridor on a high percentage day, and just wait for something to come by. So the second, or well really the first real calling tip for the rut is to try to understand what that buck's going to do before you hit that grunt call. Like I said a bit ago, that buck is going to try to circle downwind of where that grunt call came from. He's going to try to figure out, get a little information with his nose about who made that call. And best case scenario is you're set up in a, in a way that he either can't get behind you or doesn't feel safe doing it. So do your best to try to have multiple shooting lanes in different directions. So that way, if he's trying to circle downwind of you, you could possibly have a clear shot opportunity. And if you do call to him and he doesn't really react, or maybe he stops, looks where the sound came from, and then continues the direction he was going, don't assume that he's gone. He may be just trying to circle around. So again, be ready. Also, learn to read his body language and don't call to him when he's coming your direction. There's always that chance you're going to spook a deer, and if he's going to come your way anyway, just leave that call in your pocket. But if it looks like he's going away from you or maybe he's not going to circle close enough for a good shot, then you can give a soft grunt or two to try to get his attention. Now when I say soft, I mean like like that. Don't try to blow his ears off. So like I said, start soft and see if you can get his attention that way first. If he still doesn't respond, acts like he doesn't hear you, then you can get a little louder. Now, just a little word of caution, don't grunt at him if you are not ready to take a shot. Don't, it would, it's, it would be terrible to get his attention, get him to come toward you, because he's probably gonna turn and come exactly where he heard that sound if he's gonna come into the, to that call. But it would definitely suck if your bow is still on the hanger or your gun's down where you can't get to it and he's looking right in your direction. So the second tip for calling during the rut is to try to add some realism to your calls. It is rare to just hear a grunt with no other sound. Usually there's some stomping, some leaves kicking, maybe even some trees shaking, just something else other than just a single grunt. It's kind of like hearing a voice when nobody's around. So hit that grunt a few times and then maybe stomp, kick some leaves around, do something else, some other deer noises, wildlife noises, uh, like running through the woods, to add some more realism to your calling sequence. Now this is kind of hard to do when you're up in a tree. 15, 20 feet up, you can't exactly stomp on some leaves. But what you can do is maybe whenever you're, you hit that grunt a couple times, you can use 
maybe if you use antlers for your rattling calls, you can, if you've got branches on your tree, you can scrape on that, hit it a couple times to make it sound like a buck's making a rub. You could bring some leaves up in your pack and just kind of scrunch them up a little bit uh, like dead deers walking around kicking some around. You could even tie a rope to a sapling or something on the ground to make a little bit more noise. Again, so a buck's response is probably going to be to try to get downwind of wherever that sound's coming from, so make sure you're prepared for that or maybe don't use those calls unless you're in an area where that buck can't go around you. And the third tip for calling during the rut is make sure you're using the estrus bleat correctly. I'm sure that most of us had this little estrus bleat can thing in our pack and most of us use it like this. So you, you know, you turn it over, you cover the hole, turn it back and it sounds like that, that long, slow bleat. I'm pretty sure that's how the package says to do it. However, also on that print of the package that I'm sure nobody reads is that that bleat should be one to two seconds long. So instead of sounding like this, which I'm sure you're getting very tired of hearing that noise, it should sound more like this. Very short sounds. Now, it still doesn't sound very consistent. You get that kind of like, I don't know, like stuttering in it. So I have found, and I found this on another YouTube, and if I can remember where I saw it, I will link it down below. But instead of turning this over, blow into this hole, and you get a more consistent sound. Now that sounds to me a hell of a lot better than that long slow bleat that apparently is supposedly like an alarm bleat. Um, I'll have to do some research on it to, to verify that that's what that sound actually is, but it sounds better than that. And it definitely sounds better than those short, like stuttery sounds that I was getting when I was trying to just do a little short. Oh, that actually doesn't sound that bad. Oh, well, there it goes. So, but you get the idea, blow into it and you get a more consistent sound. So that was three tips plus a little word of caution to calling during the rut. If you have any more rut calling tips you'd like to share, make sure you leave those down in the comments below. Hit that like button if you like this video, share it if you found it helpful, and make sure that you are subscribed so you can stay informed.